Guys, we'll Ryzen harder this time. We are testing Ryzen in Windows 10 and Windows 7 versus the 7700K at the same clocks. No cores disabled, just the same clock rates at 4.2 gigahertz. Because there's been a lot of weird things going on with the tech media, people complaining and whining that Windows 10 is bugged on Ryzen, people whining that if you matched the clock rates, the 7700K wouldn't be beating it as bad. And also because Windows 7 is old and people still want to use it, so we may as well test in there. Systems we're using for AMD, the R7 1800X on the MSI Gaming X370 Gaming Titanium X Power Titanium 3 edition. Yeah. AM4, whatever. 16 gigs of DDR4, and we were running it at 2667, and that's all that anybody cares about. Oh, yeah, we were using the 1080 Ti, I promised. For Intel, we're using the i7 7700K at 4.2 gigahertz on four cores, eight threads. We have mounted that to the Asus Strix Z270F gaming motherboard is 1151 we have on that 16 gigs of ddr4 2667 so we're matching the clock rates of the ram and the cpu to the 1800x system and again testing with the 1080 ti at stock clocks for each cpu we're using the same cooler we are using the corsair h115i which is an all-in-one water cooler 280 millimeter by 140 millimeter over to the benchmarks so, we're starting off looking at some benchmarks here. Here we have 1800X system with our X370X power titanium. We did update the BIOS for that, it was very wonderful. And you'll notice right away, 4.191, 4.191. That's as close to 4.2 as we can get on the X power board, so we matched the 7700K right to it. Starting off, CPU-Z, everyone likes to use this, and this is in Windows 10, X64, 2447, 2351 versus uh, 2067, that's interesting. 9232, well, we knew the multi-thread was gonna be better, but the single thread, a little off. Down here, seven zip, CPU usage, doesn't really matter. Single thread MIPS, oh my God, why? It's so much faster on Intel. Oh, we, we already knew that, Never mind. Multi-thread, oh, it's so much faster on the 1800X. Oh, wait, we already knew that. Moving on to handbrake. Handbrake's actually where the, the points start, you know, adding up here a little bit. So we got 52 frames per second average on a 4K MP4 encoding. That's a 3 minute and 37 second video. 1 minute and 45 seconds, so a little under half. And then on the 7700K, 27 frames per second, give or take. 3 minutes and 13 seconds, which is not much faster than the video itself. Geekbench 3, we are on 32 bit and 64 bit. And you can see some, some good numbers there. 64-bit um, really gives the 1800X a better run for its money. At 32 bits, it's kind of lagging behind. I don't really know why, but it did it every single time. So if you look at the, look at the scores in 32-bit and think, oh my god, it's so slow, run it again in 64-bit. You'll get better performance. Geekbench 4, another program that basically uses the same algorithms but does everything faster. Suddenly our single thread is right where it should be. As you can see it matches up to about the 64 bit on Geekbench 3 and the Intel is properly above it as it should be higher IPC. The, the interesting thing about Geekbench 4 is that the multi-threaded stuff has changed to include AVX stuff. So we have multi-thread on Ryzen is suddenly a lot closer to the 7700K. That changes in Windows 7, and we'll be that with that in just a second. Hardware Bot has an H.265 benchmark that does a great little decode, or encoding, of a, of a 4K and 1080p video. Just about 30 FPS on 1080p, and well, just a little bit under 7 FPS. And if we swing right on over to the 7700K, oh, it's exactly the same. Hmm, interesting. We have a decode benchmark as well. This one's fun, it, uh, 25 megabytes per second, and we are running 720p, 1080p, and 2160. 118 FPS at 720, 86 FPS at 1080, and at 2160, which is Ultra HD 4K, 45.6. And that's where the multi-thread really kicks in on there, because it starts beating the 7700K, which has the IPC advantage all the way up until 4K. And then we ran W Prime because people, for some reason, really like W Prime. It's just a prime number integer, or a prime number breakdown thing. It does a bunch of different integer levels of prime and, and compiles them all into how much it can do in a couple of seconds. 3.872 seconds, five seconds. Yeah, so we knew that was gonna beat it because it's a multi-thread prime number cruncher. Now we get to gaming. Gaming is where people actually started to care. We had a lot of comments on the last Ryzen video like, oh, wow, well, you didn't really do a gaming job. And it was like, okay, whatever, we'll run to gaming again. So we did, in 1080p, never ran in 4K, because everybody wants 1080p, because that's where the CPU bottleneck appears. Suddenly, everything is very even. I mean, even frame times. Minimum FPS has dropped significantly on Ryzen in Windows 10, and we'll get back to that when we get to the Windows 7 benchmarks just below. 
But otherwise, pretty much straight across, uh, the only game that really shows any significant variance is Arma 3, you know, different frame times and significantly lower minimums. Gaming on Windows 7. So Arma 3 likes Windows 7 a little bit better, but the other thing that I noticed is that they didn't really change much from Windows 10, and if we go over to the 7700K, yeah, these changed a little bit, but if anything, improved. Frame times, yeah, about the same. Minimums, suddenly we've changed places, right? Because the 7700K was getting much better minimums in Windows 10 than Ryzen was. But now Ryzen is the system that's getting the better minimums. And again, we're running 1% FPS minimums. It's just, it averages the one FPS, or the 1% of the frames in the entire test that read that FPS level, and it averages them out. The takeaway from that is really that Ryzen is great at gaming and stop picking on it. Up to the multi-thread stuff in Windows 7. We did see CPU-Z failed to run on the 7700K. I have no clue as to why that happened in Windows 7. I can only assume it was a system stability issue or that it was something to do with the way the operating system was running, but it just kept giving an error that it wasn't able to run. Maybe that hasn't been worked on because nobody uses the 7700K in Windows 7 except for us. On 7-Zip, we saw an increase in CPU usage on the, 70, on the 1800X. We saw an increase in single-threaded performance. And then in multi-thread, we increased about 3,000 points, which is honestly kind of impressive. But again, more CPU usage. On the 7700K, it was basically the same across the board. I mean, a little bit lower, but by two or three points, yeah, nobody cares. Handbrake, suddenly, uh-oh, handbrake kicks in and we've got 50 FPS again. Mm, yeah, so Windows 7 is certainly seeing a little bit of performance increase in some areas and then seeing some performance decreases in others and Handbrake is one of those. For the 7700K, we saw a slight increase in performance. I mean, uh, 20 seconds on the time, three FPS, four FPS, not too shabby. Geekbench, Geekbench was an interesting one because it saw decreases across the board. You know, it's not really much to say about that. It's, it's just slower in Windows 7. We should have expected that. Windows 7 is an old operating system and can't use the schedulers and all the new stuff and the new instructions on these CPUs. For the 7700K, it, it performance increased because everything I just said is completely pointless. No, actually, it was interesting. The, the Intel system, for some reason, was seeing weird sort of variances. I ran these tests five or six times, and every now and then it would be the same, and every now and then it would be this, and this is what it averaged out to. So it is better, it continues to be better, higher IPC and all that, and it shows in all the Geekbench tests. And then we move over to the like actual, hey, I want to do video editing, please show me the benchmarks for that. H.265, for encoding and decoding, we saw an increase on both sides of the field. From AMD, we saw a good 20, for, uh, 20 FPS increase in 720. We saw a, Jesus, a 50 FPS increase in, or 40 FPS increase in 1080, and a 20-ish FPS increase in the Ultra HD. For the 7700K, again, 10 FPS increase, five FPS increase, and a two FPS increase. So. It brings Ryzen even higher, but the 7700K isn't significantly far behind it in sort of scaling in Windows 7. It's just weird that we were seeing that scaling across those. And then W Prime, it didn't want to run. So another one that just didn't want to run in Windows 7, which is interesting because HardwareBot says to run that one in Windows 7 and it just, it didn't do the thing. You'll hear more about that when we do some R5 testing potentially. We'll do some more Windows 7 testing then. That's the gist of it. So at the end of it all, in Windows 7, Ryzen looks pretty good, but it's still not as stable as it could be. Windows 10, Ryzen sort of takes a step above in multi-threading, and versus the 7700K, it's pretty much the same story between Windows 7 and Windows 10. They're both right around the same performance with the 1800X taking the multi-threaded and the 7700K taking the single-threaded. But with the clock rates matched, they're a little bit closer than they were before. In gaming, it's almost indiscernible which one's better. So that's all we got. But over here, we have merch, other video, subscribe, check links below. There's plenty and plenty of links below. And of course, join us on the forums and join us on Discord. We got lots of people on Discord active all the time talking about things that you may or may not want to be talking about, but they're there anyway. We're back on Reddit, guys. Come check us out, r slash TV.